Hello everyone and welcome to something a little bit different here on Club at 22, the Rangers podcast. This is Club 11s, um, where we are going to fill the void, if you like, of international football. For some of us, not all, um, as people that are watching will see Scotia's here and he's obviously quite happy with how things went for Scotland. Um, but for some of us, me and Ali in particular, we could not really care about international football and we are just desperate to get Rangers back. So we decided to come up with this show. We can all pull together and combine together to come up with this show. So hopefully you enjoy it. But without further ado, I am your host, Scott Carney. Joining me is Ryan Hamas. Ryan, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, pretty average. Um, average weekend, alcohol-free. Both the boys drop points in their football and hello fresh fucked my order up. So I'm having <laughs> oh. to can't wait to Monday. <laughs> Nothing worse than that, mate. Nothing worse. Oh. We use uh, we use Gusto, mate. Gusto's better. I would go with that. Um, yeah, I'm due to, I'm due to jump. I think. Yeah, definitely. We, uh, Ali Pearson, how's it going, mate? Not too bad. I get in the door at. I think about half five this morning, to be honest. I was watching the Fury fight last night. I met Scotia after <clears throat> the Scotland game last night. They actually won my coupon last night in Scotland, which I was delighted about. So, aye, it was a good day last night. Good. Uh, Scott, how's it going, mate? I'm doing very well. I was delighted with the result last night um, and the game. It was an absolutely brilliant game. One of the best games I've been to at Hamden for watching Scotland in a long time. Um, so, I just about recovered... <laughs> Just about recovered. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, a good result for Scotland, but we're not here to discuss Scotland. Scotia, I'm really, really sorry about that. But um, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it was a last minute one. I mean, I can imagine it would have been pretty tremendous uh, atmosphere. Um, it would have been pretty spectacular. But uh, yeah, uh, we're not going to talk about Scotland. Um, but we will eventually at some point, probably. But yeah, so this show is. Um, we're going to pick a Rangers 11. The guys are going to pick a Rangers 11. Um, and the only stipulation on this one is that every single player must have a different in, uh, nationality. So, yeah, this should be an interesting one. We've not done a show like this before, so we'll see how it goes. We will. The way it will work is we'll go through each position. Um, I will then have a decider on who makes the cut. And we'll end with a combined team and hopefully we end up with a, a Rangers 11, 11 players, 11 different nationalities. Um, but leave a comment um, when we're done. If you agree, disagree, what your starting 11 would be with different nationalities would be interesting to see because I am the only one that knows what the other three have picked so far. So, And it's going to be an interesting discussion, I think. So we'll just get into it. Um, Ali. Start us off with your your goalkeeper. On oh, before you do, everybody has picked a four four two formation, which makes things rather easy. So, uh, yeah, Ali, you can start off. Who's your goalkeeper? It's, it's, it's difficult picking these teams. I, I know Ryan and Scotia during the group chat during the week were saying about players for certain positions. It's difficult when you pick one player and then that's your goose for other positions. <laughs> but I mean. To me, I would have Alan McGregor there, but I can't pick him because I've got somebody else who's Scottish <laughs> in my team. So <laughs> I'm going with Anthony Niemi as my goalkeeper. Finish. I always remember the guy that phoned uh, Real Radio. Uh, phoning uh, he's not He's said, not finished. <laughs> I should have played for Scotland. Why is Craig Levine ignoring him and all this? And the guy and they told him, he said, he's, he's finished. And he went, well, he's finished. He's not finished. And they went, no, he's finished. And the guy went, oh, so he's not Scottish. So I always remember that. It was quite funny. But no, I thought Niemi was a great keeper. I, th I thought he was solid. Had a great career with Hearts as well. And Difficult because we've had a lot of good goalkeepers, Stefan Klaus, you can go through them all, but McGregor, Andy Gorham, Chris Woods. But just the way I'm going to pick my team, I'm going with Andy Niemi to start. Yeah, Niemi was, I think, was a wee bit unlucky at his time at Rangers um, due to who was in front of him when he was playing because who was in front of him? Was it Klaus was in front of him? Yeah. Klaus Shaboni there Shaboni as well. On well. Shaboni yeah, as well. That's right. That's right, Shaboni as well. Um, he was a bit of a cult, a cult hero, Shaboni, wasn't he? Um, that, was but, all, that one yeah. save he made. <laughs> yeah, that one save. Uh, but yeah, I think Anthony, Anthony Amy was a bit lucky. He did. Not, he went to Hearts after us, didn't he? And he did pretty well at Hearts. Yeah, he was um, Southampton as well, wasn't it? Say that yeah. again, mate? Yeah, he went down south. Uh, Southampton. 
So he did, yeah, so he did. So yeah, I think he was very unlucky. Uh, he's probably unlucky not to get called up to the Scottish national team, to be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryan, I'll come to you next, mate. Who's your, um, who's your goalkeeper and why? Yeah, same kind of thought process as, as uh, Ali. I, I had a different goalkeeper in mind, but I'll keep my Scotsman for, for later on in the team. It's my same goalkeeper, Anthony Amy. Um, it was kind of, I'll be honest, it's based on the fact that I wanted another German, another Scotsman in my team. So I thought, who's mm-hmm. the next best goalkeeper? And Anthony Amy was a good goalkeeper for us, but it was just unfortunate he played when we had two excellent goalkeepers in Sherbonia and Klaus as well. And uh, Klaus is one of my favourite goalkeepers. So, um, yeah, he was unlucky in Amy, but he was a great goalkeeper. And he gets he gets the number one spot for me. Yeah, he was a solid, uh, he was a solid keeper. I always remember Amy in that top with the 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 blue one was it the blue one that we had and it had the print on it he, he I'm sure it was like the crazy print that was on it I'm sure he used to mm. wear that and I remember having that in like a, a Rangers News programme that you remember in Rangers News used to get the magazines you used to get and he was one of the posters and I remember having my print my wall used to be covered in Rangers posters and I always remember him with that one but I as I say I as I say I was shocked when I read the both of your choices to be honest and that's a wee bit of a spoiler for what Scotia is about to say. So Scotia uh, your goalkeeper and why mate? Yeah well I like the guys uh, it was very difficult because once you pick a goalie <laughs> that's you. You, you, you you're kind of sacrificing to someone and I'll be sacrificing the man man behind me in the wall there. Um, I've went for um Stefan Kloss um, for my goalkeeper, um, oh, he, he was brilliant. Um, when did he sign? Ninety eight. Came on, mm-hmm. like, kind of. It was before like the transfer window came in as well. I'm sure. Cause I'm sure we mm-hmm. signed him like some mad time, like September, October, November, kind of time. Came in, he was really good. He was captain for a wee period of time. Um, yeah, he, der, he's called their goalie for no other reason than that he was brilliant. When he finished up, I was kind of getting injured all the time, but he was McGregor's, well, McGregor was his understudy pretty much. Yeah, so I had to go for Stefan Kloss as my goalie. Yeah, Stefan Kloss was uh, an incredible goalkeeper, um, especially after I say we were all spoiled, we're all rather sim- similar ages, and we were all brought up with uh, Andy Gorham. Uh, and I genuinely believe that Kloss was the, the next goalkeeper that. I, at that point, anyway, um, I, I think he's now probably third in all-time Rangers goalkeepers behind Gorham and McGregor. But, yeah, Kloss was spectacular for Rangers, he really was. And for such a small guy, the way he used to get himself about, like, in terms of a goalkeeping standards, he's, he's a small man, uh, but he was he was tremendous. Ali, your thoughts on Kloss? Oh, he was a great goalkeeper, Stefan Kloss. I mean, there's there that myth, I don't know if it's a myth, to be honest, that he was on... 50 odd grand a week at Rangers. I remember was back <laughs> way back then. But um, no, he was fantastic. I, I don't know if he was a free Stefan Claus or we got him for next to nothing, to be honest, Stefan Claus. But what a bit of business to get him in and fantastic goalkeeper for us. And we've always had good goalkeepers at Ibrox. Apart from the banter years, you can rule that out. But <clears throat> we've always had good goalkeepers at Rangers. And he was just another good goalkeeper for Rangers. And he was. He was a fantastic goalkeeper, and yeah, I can't, I can't disagree with Scotia. But as we said, it's difficult to pick the team <laughs> because in terms of the nationality, so it'll be interesting what you pick. To be honest, yeah, oh, well, I'm not picking one member. <laughs> oh, I thought you were picking out the three all, all the positions. Oh no, I will be. Long. Yeah, no, you're right. No, right. you're right. I, I get where you're coming from now. Um, Ryan, what's your thoughts on Stefan Kloss? He was, he was one of my favourite players. I absolutely love Kloss. Um, it always sticks in my mind. Just uh, I don't know if you guys will remember. There was a game at, we played at Parkhead. I think it was two thousand. It was a Wednesday night, and it was absolutely hammered down with rain. And it was a terrible game. It was like nil nil to like the eighty six minute. But Klaus had save after save after save, and we scored. There's like it was Wallace that scored the shittiest goal. And it basically secured the title. I think it was at like March time or something like that. And they hammered us that night, but Klaus just pulled save after save. And he, he always played well against them. That's what most of our goal, goalkeepers do. Um, but he was, he was colossal for me. He's, and I use the term, I don't use the term a lot, but for me, he's a legend. I thought he was a, a fantastic goalkeeper for us. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so we'll move on. Uh, Scotia, I'll come uh, to you. Carney, no, first. Yes. 
Before you move on, just about Klaus, he didn't get enough Germany caps for me. And all yeah. of you obviously had all of our can, oh, yeah. but Stefan Klaus was like, must have been like the second best goalkeeper in the world at points. So, yeah, Champions League winner as well, Scotia. No, we Bruce mm-hmm. Dortmund, aye. Yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. Um, it was going to be hard to get a game over a can, wasn't it? Um, I, I, I like Stefan Klaus a lot more than I like can. We all know why we all hate <laughs> can, it's because he fucking ruined Michael Moses' career, that's why. But, um, but yeah, I was going to be, it would have been difficult for him, but you can't, you can't disagree with the quality that Klaus had, and he probably did deserve more more caps for his country. Uh, so, Scotia, so I'll come to you next, mate. Um, we're into the defense now, so we'll start the right back position, mate. Who have you got at right back? Right back, there was two names that I had in my head. Um, and it was difficult to write back position because I was thinking about it and there wasn't many and if I pick one again you're losing a position somewhere else but um, I've went for our current captain current leader and James Tavernier Um, I think he's been phenomenal excuse me phenomenal since um, he's joined us back now in 2015 I mean I remember that goal he scored what we beat Hibs 6-2 in the Challenge Cup in his first game scored an absolutely tremendous free kick his goal against Peter Head in the Scottish Challenge Cup. I mean, I was with their way, Ali and his dad, and we were going mental when that went in. <laughs> and he's just, he's a tremendous example of what Rangers should be all about. And then, um, yeah, I love him at the moment. And yeah, for my right back, he was the one that I had to, had to opt for. Yeah, he's, he's always going to be the captain that lifted 55, mate. He's never going to be taken away for him. He will be in the history books forever. Um, I, I grew to love Tav. I think I was I was part of the... I wasn't quite part of the fuck's sake Tav brigade, but I wasn't quite sure if he was if he was going to cut the mustard. Uh, I was so pleased to see Gerard back him though when Gerard took over and continued just to keep him as captain. I think it was been a, quite a... a it could have been detrimental to Tav's career if he'd have took the captaincy off him. Um, a lot of people did question. I think I even said it at points that I don't think Tav's a Rangers captain. But my goodness, he has proved me wrong. Um, and as I say, he's going to be remembered as, as one of the greats now. Ali, your thoughts on the current captain? Yeah, I had Tav in it right back until you told me I had two English folk in my team. So I had to pull <laughs> Tav out for somebody else. But what a bad business. £250,000 from Wigan all those years ago. I remember watching him when first game under Warburton and I seen Tab at right back and I thought, he's a player. He looked a player. But I'll be honest, I never thought he would get to the level he is now in terms of being captain of, 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 our, of our football club. But fantastic. He's he's um, lifted 55. He's probably one of the guys in that team that's been through the banter years, you want to call it, deserves it more than, than anyone. He could have left a couple of years ago, easily to have. He stayed. I think he's settled in Glasgow. He's, he's got his missus and his two kids up here. I think he loves it up here, and I hope he stays for for uh, for many years to come. But he's got a young man in Nathan Parson, who Scotia seen last night for Scotland, uh, right at his heels at the moment. So... That'll push Tab on, but no, it's a good choice for Scotia. And like I say, I did have him in my team until you told me Carney had two English folk, so he was taken out of my team. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was that was one of the two, mate, for sure. Um, Ryan, your thoughts on James Tavernier? I'd be a hypocrite if I said that I've always been a massive fan of Tavernier. I've got to be honest. Um, I was part of the fuck's sake Tav Brigade. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Before, before 55, I was. Um I felt that he, he struggled defensively at times, but I was so behind him for for proving me wrong. And by God, did he prove me wrong last season. He hit levels that not only did I not think he was capable of, I don't think many of us thought even guys like was a big fan of him. He hit some crazy levels last year and absolutely pulled us to 55. And oh, he's, he goes down as a legend, there's no doubt about that because of what what he did for us. Um, I'm a massive Nathan Patterson fan, as you know. If money came in for Tavernier, I don't see Gerard doing it, but if money came in for Tavernier, is it a good time to sell him? He is, is he ever going to get any better? Than him? Or is he ever going to be worth more than he's worth us now? But what an engine he's got in him, and I've always said that, even when I was kind of criticised him a few years ago, he has some engine when he builds up and down that wing, and we're a different team when he's not in it, attacking, we're a slower team. 
Yeah, there's not really any doubt about that um, at all. Uh, he has got some injury. It's an interesting point you make about him. I mean, I don't know if Rangers would sell him, to be honest. I don't even know what, as what Ali just said as well, if Tavernier would actually leave because he seems very settled here um, and he realises what he can become. He can go on to be, kind of cement himself as a um, as a legend of this football club because of what he's achieved. Um, I, I said it as well during um, what well, I think it was a one out of 55 shows that we'd done after we'd won the league that there's not many people in that team that deserved it more than James Tavernier for everything that he's been through. Um, yeah. And the way he's developed and the way he's come on and the way he's grew into being a Rangers captain. Obviously, he's been helped with McGregor behind him. He's been helped with Conor Goldson beside him. Two massive leaders for Rangers, but he still gets the armband. Um, so he is still the captain. So it's a, a cracking shout, Scotia. So we'll jump on to uh, Ryan, your choice at right back, mate. And this is probably the first curveball. Yes, I don't expect that. Well, I know what Scotia is. I don't expect to have have chosen this, but... I was a huge fan of this guy. Like I thought, he was, I'm a huge fan of him all in my, in my team. But Claudia Rainer is my right back. When I mm-hmm. played him there, I just thought he was brilliant. I, I, he never gave the ball away. Like he really mm-hmm. didn't. He was always committed in every challenge. Popped up with his goals. And the style—I mean, the style of football my four-four-two is going to play. He's going to fit. He's going to fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> He was, he was a great player. I don't know how many caps he got for America as well. I would say he's the best American footballer that I've seen. I can't think of anyone better than, than Claudia Rainey. Obviously, went down to City and, and Sunderland, won the treble was. Yeah, he's a, he's my right back and ticks the USA box. Brilliant player. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was the first one I thought, oh, I forgot he actually um, kind of played at right back. He arguably played probably some of his best football for us at right back, to be yeah. honest. Um, Ali, your thoughts on um, Claudia Arena? Yeah, it's a good shout, Brian, to be honest. I completely forgot about, well, I didn't completely forget about Claudia Arena, but <laughs> as a right back, I forgot about him as a right back. But he, he did play at right back for us a few times, so... Good shout. I always remember the goal he scored against uh, Parma, the 2 0 game at Ibrooks. He was a great player, though, Claudio Arena. He's a Steve Davis, a 7 out of 10 every week for me. <clears throat> Claudio yeah. Arena never dropped, to be honest. And Captain America, he was a um, fantastic player for us. Yeah. Scotia, your thoughts on Arena? Yeah, can't disagree. I love Arena. Um, yeah, and echo what each and Ryan and Ali have just said there. Sorry, I've got like a bombs. Of- Planes flying overhead, so I keep on having to mute myself. <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> was Helen's for that warm, mate? Like, what's happening? Uh, it must be. Because <laughs> well, they're getting ready for this COP26 in a couple of weeks. So. Oh, aye, 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 that's right. I oh, God. Right, aye, aye, that's, that's absolutely fine, mate. We'll, we'll, we'll move on from there. Um, Ali, I'll come back to you for your, your first... No, Ryan, I'll come to you first, sorry, for your first centre-back. I didn't say my right-back, by the way. Oh, no, you did. Sorry, mate. Sorry. <laughs> see, shows you how, how much we prepare for podcasts, doesn't it? Um, Ali, who's your right back? <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be fair, I did have Tav in there until you told that yeah. to English folk. But um, yeah. so I had to sort of tinker with my back line, to be honest. So I pulled the guy out at centre half who I would have had in to pull this guy in at right back. So I went with Sergio Perini at right back. He came in. I think it was Advocate that brought him. It was Advocate that brought Perini in. Yeah, I think he was part of the younger the younger listeners when Advocate came in, had money to throw about, so we were bringing <laughs> in big players from all over the place, to be honest, back then. And um, Sergio Perini was, was one of those players that came in. I thought he was solid. I thought he'd be better than what he was, to be honest, but... Um, I put Perini in there. I, he was a bit of a madman, to be honest. Perini, typical <laughs> Italian, but loose in the head, to be honest. But he was uh, no, he was he was he was a good right back, Sergio Perini, and he's my he's my shout. Yeah, Scotia, your thoughts on Perini? If the bombs haven't, if the, the bombs have stopped in Helen's and you can unmute yourself and tell us about Perini. Still circuit, still circling about. I think a wee bit. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Sergio Perini, uh, he was uh, he was brilliant. I, I, I did consider him. But there's other Italians that I would prefer in my team over him. Um, yeah, what Ali says, he was brilliant for a wee period of time. Um, it wasn't how long was he with? It's only a year or two. 
I think yeah. it might have been like 18 months. I don't even know if it was a full two years, to be a, honest. I get a bit, bit of an injury as well, wasn't he? He was out for quite a long time. So um, it's one of those Let's players watch. that... Aye, oh, oh, was it that one? Oh, aye, of course, that, oh, the story, <laughs> yes, yes, the story. <laughs> yeah, that one, but um, aye, no, Preeny's a good shout. It's a cracking shout. Uh, yeah, Ryan, as you say, you might be more remembered for being at the other end of um, Marco Negri's uh, playing away, if you like. Um, obviously, the rumour is that he had a wee bit of a thing with Preeny's wife um, and Ammo then battered Prini, <laughs> and all battered Negri, sorry, and always down, all put down to a squash game. Um, that's the story I remember anyway from growing up. But your thoughts on Prini, mate? Yeah, he was, um, I remember the story you're talking about well. Um, I don't want to say too much on it because I've got one of the players involved in my team, but Prini was my, <laughs> Prini was my second choice to Vayner. Um I thought Prini was a great player, but he had lost his legs a bit by the time it came to us. But again, he was another... Correct me if I'm wrong, I think he was another Champions League winner. I think he won the Champions League with Juventus in 96, I think. Possibly. Yeah, so I think he was, uh, as, as Ali said, he was a madman. He, he was a, 100% in the challenges. So, uh, yeah, he was a great player for Rangers, a great signing. I think he was a, I think he was a freebie as well, but probably on like 40, 50 grand. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, EBTs were in full flow, I think, around that time. Um, that's that's for sure. But I the the my, I always remember my dad saying how much he loved Perini as well. Was my dad kind of right back, do you know what I mean? My dad grew up with um some absolutely great names at right back, and he always loved Perini. He always said he's a solid player. I always remember my dad saying it. So yeah, good shout that. So yes, Ryan, I'll come to you now for your first uh, centre back choosing, mate. My first centre back is this was easy. Is Carlos Cuella, uh, so that's your Spanish box ticker. Um, Carlos Cuella is a brilliant player. He just, I felt is, you know, sometimes when we get a player in, at Rangers and you just think he walks it in Scotland, he just sticks out. Like he had that, he, he just barely broke sweat at times. And then that run in Europe as well, obviously, McGregor and yeah, other players played their part. I thought Carlos Cuella was class at times. Um, he was a uh, and also a massive fan of the song about his his fucked up teeth as well. So, um, <laughs> no, he was he was a great he was a great defender for us. And where was it he went on to? Quella, Villa was Villa. it? Yeah, was it Villa? Strip? Did he play with two teams in England? Or was it just Villa? Can't think. No, did he play with Sunderland or something? That's what that. I was thinking. He went to a Premier League team, then right. went to a lower league team. Anyway, yeah. he was a, no, he's a fantastic player for us and just one of those type of players you see and you're like, yeah, we'll, we'll be lucky to hold on to him for a couple of seasons and it was it was proven he was at that level when he went down there and done well as well. So, yeah, Carlos Coelho for me. Yeah, it was a cracking shout. He was a, an absolutely superb player. He um, really was. He was... Uh, it, he was miles above Scottish football, to be completely honest. He was he was a cracking player, a really intelligent football player. Uh, Ali, your thoughts on Quella? And you obviously know why I'm coming to you for your thoughts on Quella as well, mate. Yep, yeah, I've seen as Ryan, I've put Quella on my back line as well. I thought he was a fantastic player, especially that run to, to Manchester. It was outstanding. I mean, Scotia were, um, we actually met Carlos Quella uh, uh, a night out there. Called now down Paisley Road. We actually got to meet Queller and spoke to him, a couple of photos of him. Nice guy. He's really friendly with Novo as well. Obviously, the two of them are Spanish, but um, great guy. But no, in terms of what he was a footballer, outstanding. I was gutted when he went to Villa. I know we probably had to sell players at that point, but I was gutted when he went because he was he was outstanding as a as a centre back for us. And yeah, he's in my team as well. Yeah, Scotia, your thoughts on Queller, mate? Yeah, Queller was kind of when you're going through the nationalities and stuff, and like Queller is the standout Spanish player. Because who else you got? You get Novo, and oh, do you really want to put Niguez in your team? <laughs> um, I thought about it. Well, it's me, brother. It's me, brother. Your pal, Patrick Scotia. Uh, <laughs> <yes. laughs> um, but yeah, Queller was kind of one of the first names that kind of popped out up, up, out for me for being a for a centre half. But what I would say about him is how much how good he was. How much of that was down to Davy Weir? Mm, that's true. I don't yeah. think that can be underrated. I think Davy Weir kind of led him through a few games and 
he was never as I don't think he was ever as good a centre half as he was when he was with us. And that's probably the, a wee bit down to David Weir, I would say. Yeah, I'd agree with that. You just were, just were spot on as well. He went from Rangers to Villa to Sunderland and then he went to Norwich City before going to Almeria. I thought, uh, I thought he'd played for a couple of them. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and you're talking about Spanish players. Mika Arteta was Spanish, was he not? Oh, so he was, I. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, well, I don't know. See, I didn't pick a team, so I'm like, I've not actually checked all this, but yeah. Well, if, uh, if, McLeish, if McLeish was on it, we went messy, mind McLeish tried to sign Messi. No, oh, <laughs> <don't think> Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Imagine so something I like was the second choice. Yeah, I thought I was the second choice. Yeah, um, so yeah, obviously, I'm, Ali, I'm not going to come back to you because you've you've said who your your centre back pair is, and it's obviously the same as Ryan's. But Scotia, who was your um, first pick at centre back? Um, first pick will be the Italian stallion himself, Big Lorenzo <laughs> Amoruso. Um, I loved him, man. He went, he joined in what '97. Walter Smith signed him. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't start off. He, he didn't have the best of starts with Rangers. He was a wee bit shaky at times, but he grew and grew into a really good player, really good centre half. And when I was picking my centre half, this probably gives away who's my second centre half is going to be. But I was looking for a, a, a good pairing at centre half. Um so I went for for Amar Lusso, man. Um Advocat was a bit of a dick to him. Stripped him <laughs> of the captaincy. Um, and I, I remember but I was at speaker's night with um, Barry Ferguson and he was talking about it and Barry Ferguson was saying that he felt really bad that Amo would get stripped of the captaincy, but what you got to do what are you going to do? So I felt Advocat didn't treat him very fairly. But then he, he after Advocat left, McLeish comes in, Amo grew into a great player again. So uh, the big Italian stallion for me. And he's put, he, did they win that? Ali, you'll know this, like Celebrity Love Island or something over in Italy. Did not win that? Or? I don't know. Yeah, Scotia. I know I lo- watch a lot of crap, but I didn't even watch that, to be honest. I know he was on it, but I don't know if he won it. Aye. You do watch some amount of crap, mate. You really do. Um, but uh, no, I don't know if he won that either, to be honest. But I mean, it's hard not to love Big Ammo, to be honest. Uh, he had a, a strike in him. Um, well, one in one in ten, probably. Um, you see strikes, but when he hit them well, they were they were superb. So, uh, Ryan, your thoughts on Amaruso? Yeah, it was a great play for us. Um, I was at his game, his, his debut at Celtic Park, and it was just it was a. It was a cup game and we had like half half the stadium each hand must have been getting done up at the time. I think he'd been out injured for a for a year about a year. And I was in the, the main stand, maybe a few rows up, and he came on and my dad was just like, Look at the fucking size of him. <laughs> He's just standing waiting to go on and he won. He only played like I think he played like 10, 15 minutes that day. He won every single header. Um and obviously that set of premises for, for him going forward. He he loved a duel against them, didn't he? Whether it was Sutton or Larson or Hart, whoever, he loved those duels against them. Um, big physical Italian player, gorgeous. Loved it, didn't he? Absolutely loved it. He was a great player for us. Yeah, Ali. He nearly tried no. to play for Scotland. Did he? I don't <laughs> that. Because it caused the five-year residency, residency rule, um, and I'm pretty sure he was coming out going, oh, I'd love to play for Scotland. I <laughs> 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 OK. <laughs> um, I, Ali... No matter the way he was treated at the club, um, obviously it was a bit unfortunate him getting stripped to the captaincy and all that. He, his love for the club it never wavered, and we always we will always take to um, players that are not homegrown, not British, not Scottish, English, Irish, whatever, um, that really get the club. And Amaruso Amorous, absolutely loved playing for Rangers. Yeah, he, he, he bought into Rangers. He, he knew exactly what it was about, and he was a great captain. I felt for him when the. Advocate to the camp so often gave it to Barry, but still a leader in that part for me, Amaru. So I don't know how long he was at Rangers. He was there for quite a while, I would say, I don't know, five years or so. But he was um, a great, great player. And um, I was gutted when he went to Blackburn. And I think he said in speakers' events, no, he was didn't want to go to Blackburn, didn't want to mm-hmm. go there. And, he went down to Blackburn and he's he was a fan's favourite. I think he was captain of Blackburn as well, actually, when he went down there and he was a fan's favourite down there. But fantastic player, Amaru. So loved to come out with the ball at his feet and do a dribble up the park, which gave me the fear at times, to be honest. He, he could he could hit three kicks, go in the stand, or 
it'd be a bullet in the top corner. You never know what you were going to get with him, but he was um, he was in my team until obviously I made an arse earlier on, so I had to pull him out for somebody else. But um, <laughs> no, good, good shout, that's good two shout. arses you've made of it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wasn't wasn't the wasn't the best attempt from Ali. You could tell he'd literally just thought about it for about five seconds and then sent me a message to say that was his team. Um, right, Ali, I'll come back to you, mate, for um, your choice, your second choice at centre back. Second one, like I said, big ammo would have been there, but I made an arse out. So I'm um, I'm bringing a guy in again. I think bought into Rangers as well. Good with the ball at his feet. Well, he liked to dribble. Similar to Amaroos with this guy, I'm I'm going to go with Big Boogie, Big Era. I thought he was brilliant. He loved it, like you're saying about Jules Amaroos against them. Big Era loved against them. I remember the game. Robbie Keane came up here with a big fanfare behind him. He was going to <laughs> save their fucking hopes and all that nonsense. And he came up, Kevin Thompson banjoed him twice instantly. <laughs> Big Era, to be fair, should have been sent off in that game. And he gave a wee wink to the side of the park and I always remember that man I thought fucking brilliant he knows what it's about and I always remember the game we played um, I was Dundee United we beat him 7-1 and he just basically ran up the park with the ball went, went by about the, their whole team and just put it in the back of the net and it kind of summed Baguera up just did what he wanted to be fair Baguera but I thought he could defend as well Baguera and he was, we were always linked with Baguera later on to possibly come back because he went to the Middle East and Got a bit, of, got a bit of spindulas out there, but no, big, big boogie's my pick for my beside Carlos Coelho. Yeah, boogie was the the meme that was kicking about. It was the gift that was kicking about when it was like Rangers announced trying to encourage fans not to go to Ibrooks and not to go to George Square, and it's just him winking, <laughs> <laughs> which is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> um, Brian, your thoughts and Bagheera, mate. It's the first thing I think when Ali said to uh, Bagheera, I think of that winking gif. I don't know. I know that's not great for him, but <laughs> it's the first thing I think of. It's so good if, it, if that's timed well, then it's brilliant. If it's in the right context, uh, aye. But see, with the ball at his feet, it's always great having a defender who looks so good with the ball at his feet. I mean, he could have played centre mid. He's just so competent with the ball at his feet and he could defend as well. And uh, um, as I said, he, he bought into it. You could see he loved playing for Rangers. And I remember him getting linked with us coming back when we were down in divisions. I was like, oh, he would be a decent player for us if he came back. Um, but yeah, I totally, totally echo Ali's sentiments. He's a, he's a great player for Rangers. 100%. Scott, Bagheera? Yeah, I mean, what we lost Queller that summer and you're like, oh, who's going to replace him? And then Boogie comes in. And yeah, everything about him you kind of love. He's... Oh, he, I always feel that he should have been there a wee bit longer. What was it, three seasons or two and a half seasons? It was two and a half seasons, I think. See if he was at where was a wee bit longer. Oh, but the loved ball, obviously. Shit hit the fan in 2012. But um, yeah, love big, big boogie. Yeah, he was a cracking player. Yeah, he really was. As I was saying, but he will always be remembered for the, the winking gif. Um, so I went and got lost again. Uh, well, I'll come back to you if you were a second choice. Uh, Ryan, I'll come to you, your second choice centre back, mate. Mm. Second choice centre back was this is where I got to the stage and the boys would be the same. I was starting to think of nationalities and thinking, right, who's the best player I've seen for Rangers with that nationality? So I had probably about five Scotsmen in my team and I narrowed it down to this man and it's because he's the best captain I've ever seen with Rangers and I think when I think of a captain, I think of this man, it's Richard Goff. He is just the perfect example for any young player. Kept himself in absolute mint condition. Led the team. Some of the, I always remember some of the old videos I used to watch, like every other Saturday videos or whatever they were called. And you would see like uh, footage of Goff walking up the tunnel and just kind of poking at the players and saying things to them like, we know what's required today, this is what we need to do, blah, blah, blah. And he was just a captain, a leader, a goal threat at set pieces, a hardy bastard and kept himself in mint condition and um, just represents everything I like to see in a Rangers captain. So for me, that was an easy decision and that is my Scotsman away, but no, Richard Goff is my centre-half and captain. 
What a Scotsman to give it to, though, mate. Let's be honest. Um, he's up there with the best, mate. And as I say, we are all similar of similar ages. And <clears throat> Richard Goff is still the captain to me. I think he probably always will be. He was a guy I grew up watching, leading the team to the nine in a row. Um, and the, the the pictures of him holding that nine in a row trophy will love you forever. It really, really will. It was tremendous. Ali, your thoughts on Captain Courageous himself? Yeah, there's not much more I can say. It was no, no. I think kind of summed up to be honest. He has, he has to me, like, like you said, he's he's the captain of the Rangers. He always will be led us to, to nine in a row. It, it doesn't seem to age Richard Goff. I mean, I look at him now and he looks the same as what he did away back then, to be honest. I know he lives out in, um, and he lives out in LA now, actually, and out in America, and he's he's dead into his fitness, Richard Goff. Now he does his triathlons and everything. And, um, he come, I think he's an ambassador for Rangers now, but no, can't say anyone. Ryan said, fantastic, fantastic captain, and you'll always be my captain, if you know what I mean. Yeah, 100%. Um, Scotia, your thoughts on Goff? Um, um, I think even the listeners are aware that he's your all time favourite Rangers player. Yeah, this was the most difficult decision I had to make um, doing this and not including him in my team, but I. Love Richard Goff, absolutely love him. Um, I, I've went on long, a really long time about how good he was for us. But he is the captain. He's, he's always going to be my captain. I mind Ali spoke about it previously that we met Walter Smith on quite an intimate night, and um, <laughs> I went to bar with really Smith, a wee bit half cut, and went, "Ah, so who was the better player, Richard Goff or Davy Weir?" <laughs> and the, the look. That Walter Smith gave me was um, <laughs> terrifying to say the least. I, can, I, I knew the answer to the question, but I just thought, oh, make a bit of chit chat. <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely oh, love Richard Goff. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, backfired tremendously on you. You got the look off Watty, mate. You got the look. Uh, you left to tell the tale, Scotia. You left to tell the tale. So I have just looked at the time, lads, and realised how long we've been going on this. So what I'm going to do from going forward now, I'm just going to come to you for your picks. You can say a wee bit about it, but I won't come to the other guys, because if we don't, we're going to be here for about <laughs> two hours, uh, and nobody wants to listen to a two and a half of our podcast. Um, so, Scotia, I think it's you. Yes, it is. Uh, it's your turn, mate, to your second choice. Um, centre back yeah well as I said I kind of tried to pick a partnership so I think you can all get an idea of who it's going to be and it's um, Craig Muir um, what he played for Rangers three separate occasions really and he was well no maybe two he was in the youth team I remember him being on champ man one or champ man two he was like a striker for us at the point <laughs> um, I love him um, obviously he was a captain again couple of captains in the my team already I should note um, but then he fell out with McLeish because he went to the Olympics with Australia what, in 2004 and um, we were at that, that um, heart and hand night with him at, um, down at the Loudoun Tavern and um, <laughs> I'm in Cammy Bell um, <laughs> where I'm like was, did, it, did it say like fuck Australia or something on it but he wasn't best pleased um, but we met him that night and he was such a really good speaker, really loved him, seemed like a really, really nice bloke. So yeah, Craig Moore is my second centre half. Yeah, it's a cracking shout, mate. We did meet him with a heart and hand night and he was a, an absolute gentleman. He really was. He was an absolute lovely lad. And it was I was three times he's actually been at Rangers. He was there for a year as a youth and then he came back uh, twice to, to Ibrox. So yeah, Craig Miller is an cracking shout. So we're on to the left back position now. Um, I'm, again, I've no idea what order we're going in. So Scotia, I'll come to you first, mate. Who was your left back? Yeah, left back was kind of a tricky position. But then when you think about it, there was like a couple of players that you could have could have slotted in but for me it was um, Arthur Newman has to has to play there um, because Arthur Newman was brilliant for us again he obviously came across with the, like, the big Dutch contingent we advocate um, he could have stayed I think he could have stayed a wee bit longer um, but Rangers at that point were about to like do a big fire sale and mm -hmm. the, the wages that we offered him weren't good enough and then ended up retiring because I would have loved him to stay because he could, could do it, he could still do it. You see him in like the Legends games and stuff now and he's he still looks as if he could play for us right now, actually. 
yeah, I think Roman's a, a, a tremendous shout. It really is. He's one of the best left backs I've ever seen at Rangers, that's for sure. The quality that you had, he might have not been in peak peak condition um, really towards the end that we had him, but he was a tremendous player. Ali, I'll come to you, mate, um, for the obvious reason. Yeah, um, same as Scotia. I've went with Newman at left back. Again, with a lot of Dutch during the Arbicat year, good Dutch players, Van Bronckers, was a great player for Rangers, but Arthur Newman, for me, he's got to get that left back slot. I thought he went up a modern day winger, a what modern day fullback, if you want to say, in terms of he would bomb up and down that park, score a couple of goals for us, scored one against them. I remember a bullet, bullet shot outside the box, I remember. But, um, no, fantastic player, Arthur Newman. Me and Scotch actually met Arthur Newman in a, a night out when we were in 29 one night, and he was absolutely blittered. That was quite good to me. <laughs> I've got a couple of photos with him, but, um, no. I'm the same as Scotia, 100% Arthur Newman, my left back. Yeah. Ryan, uh, your choice at left back, mate? This was hard. My left hand side was so hard. I had uh, as a Scotsman first, and then it was Newman, but I wanted to utilise my, my Dutch, uh, my Dutch card elsewhere. So my left back is it's a box ticker, unfortunately. It's Big Sasa Papach. Mm. Solid player for us. Good signing. Um, <laughs> And his boy's name, so that's about that's all I can say about him. <laughs> Sasha, we've I'll been unfair on, we've been unfair on Sasha, mate, let's be honest. Uh, Sasha Papach was just the solid left back that we all kind of needed at the time, to be honest, and he became a bit of a cult hero, and he was another one that kind of bought into the, the cause. He knew what it was all about here, and yeah, I've got nothing nothing bad to say about, um, about Sasha, but uh, a wee spoiler, he's... Stiff competition been up against Newman, to be completely honest. Um, so we'll move on now um, to discuss one player that you, everyone, uh, the three of you's picked, um, and it would be at right mid or the way that I've chosen the team at the end. He'll be right mid, and it is Brian Loudrop. Um, he's the picture for the the artwork for this this uh, show in particular, and. I mean, we could literally do a full show on the guy. Um, I don't think there's any doubt about it. He is my favourite player of all time. He will always be my favourite player of all time. Um, he's one of the biggest reasons that I love Rangers as much as I do. Uh, I absolutely adore Brian Loudrop, and even to this day, I, I still do. Uh, Ryan, it's Loudrop, it's God. It's God, indeed. And if uh, nobody had picked him, I was def- if somebody didn't pick him, uh, I was definitely resigning my position for this podcast. <laughs> he is he's, every, he's everything he, he was just phenomenal and um, if I've not mentioned already I am going to meet him on Friday so that is uh, that's something I've been looking forward to for a while Lodrup was he tore them apart didn't he he absolutely ripped them apart played football the way you played football when you were a boy in, at the school playground and was a joy to watch and the only regret I have is I thought we would always have him I was so young probably 12, 13, I was so young that I thought we would always have him. I'd always have a player like that and probably didn't take it in the way I should have when I was that age. It was, it was unbelievable. Yeah, I 100% agree, mate. He is one of them players that I, I still can't believe when I speak to people that are much younger than I am and I, I start talking about Loudrop and they go, I've never seen Loudrop play and my head, I can't, my, my head can't comprehend that. I'm like, what do you mean you didn't see Loudrop play? Everybody's seen Loudrop play. Like, it's just one of the, you just, you presume everybody's seen this guy um, and I consider myself very lucky to see him in his prime. I, I really do. He was just a tremendous football player. Ali, um, Brian Loudrop. <laughs> Ryan might not be too happy. I nearly put Jesper Christensen as my goalkeeper, <laughs> by the way. You're home. You're an absolute home. I remember no, you he's Danish, so I can't put him in because obviously <laughs> I'm going to put Loudrop in. <laughs> so, um, no, what can you say about Loudrop? One guy that would get you off your seat, Ibrooks. Younger fans that have never seen Brian Loudrop, honestly, go on YouTube and have a look at the guy. Glides with a ball. Just the way he moves with a ball, it's effortless the way he goes past players it's just goes by them they loved a goal against them and he lived down in Scotia's night woods and Helens but as well but he was uh I he was god I was god when he agreed to go at Chelsea because we that final year we had him we kind of lost him if you know what he meant because his head was elsewhere and he wasn't brilliant the last season but no fantastic player Brian Ledrup and um 
again, another guy that's not aged. He looks the same as what he did way back then. And I'm en- envious of Ryan meeting him on, on Friday night. So, I no, I'm not surprised we all picked Brian Lodge up, to be honest. No, Ryan, just make sure you ask him on the podcast on Friday, mate. That's all. That's at least I expect from you, mate, is to ask him to come on this podcast. Um, Scotia, uh, <laughs> any more, uh, anything more to add for Loudrop? Um, not really, no, but apart from his goal that clinched his, what was it? Was it eight in a row? No, it was nine in a row. Um, the nine. header um, mm-hmm. against Dundee United. Charlie Miller crosses it in and bang. Yeah, absolutely loved him. Lucky enough to meet him once or twice due to where I stay, I suppose. But um, yeah, couldn't. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Brian yes, as, as Brian Loudrop be, he's, he's, he's everything. Um, he's everything to me. He's a, I'm writing a love letter to the guy. Uh, yeah, he is, he's, he's just, he's, he's always going to be that guy that I, when I think of great players and um, when I see the number 11 shot, I think of Brian Loudrop and I, I always will think of Loudrop. He's a, a true legend of our club um, and he, he, we, were, we were so lucky to see a, a man of that calibre playing for Rangers, honestly, because in his prime, he was just tremendous. Um, he could have went on and played for other teams. I have absolutely no doubt about it, but he fell in love with the club. Obviously, we lost him um, to Chelsea, which is unfortunate. I think it was probably a bit too soon. And as Ali mentioned, we did kind of lose him towards the end. But in his prime, he was just tremendous. And every single goal that you see from Loudrop is a cracker. None of them are like tap-ins or scrappy goals. Every single one he scores is a peach. Um, he's one of the players and he'll always be held in a very high regard for me. And I'm glad that all three of you put him in your teams. So we'll move on to the central midfield positions now. Uh, Ali, you can go first, mate. Who have you picked your first choice in your centre midfield? It was a no-brainer for me. Gaza got to play in the centre of the park for us. I, I was lucky enough to meet Paul Gascoigne. My, my, my grandfather was selling his house just in the outskirts of Helens when Gascoigne came to view it one day and I was I was just, I was, well, I don't know what it is, I was at time 10 or something and I was lucky enough to meet him. And um, what a fantastic player Paul Gascoigne was. And yeah, I always remember them, the eight in a row, eight in a row is when you remember we scored the hat-trick against Aberdeen. He just grabbed that game with the scuff of the neck by himself and well, just a fantastic player, and I, I honestly think we got the best out of Paul Gascoigne up here. He was a bit mental, and well, we all know it's quite documented his, his troubles he's had, and he's, he's better now. But fantastic player, and some of the stories with Gascoigne and McCoy, you hear him talk sport are just outstanding. I could listen to them all day, honestly, and I would love to have have the two of them together in a room just to hear the stories. But no, Paul Gascoigne all day long. Yeah, I mean. It's, again, he's another one that I, I am so grateful that I've seen that man play. I was at the game where he won eight in a row for us, um, a game that I will never forget. I truly never will. And uh, He was a special, special talent. Um, it's obviously unfortunate he's, the troubles that he's had. Is obviously, it's there for everybody to see. But uh, in terms of a football player, there was few like him, um, and ever, really, few like him. He, he, his determination when he wanted to, and he wanted to turn it on, and he wanted to perform, he was tremendous. He really was. And I always think of even the the goal we scored um, against Celtic where they hit the bar and we broke up the park and he headed it in. I mean, that's Paul Gascoigne. He, he, it was, that's just the guy that he was. Absolutely tremendous. Ryan, I'll come to you for the obvious reasons, mate. Your first choice. Yeah, Gascoigne, that it was, it was easy for me for the Englishman. So, Paul Gascoigne, um, Brian Loudrop was my favourite all-time Rangers player. And obviously the two of them played at the same time and, and you may disagree with me, guys, but you might one day see another Brian Ludrup with Rangers. You'll never, ever see another Paul Gascoigne. You will never see it. And it's for the car- the character he was, the mad the mad side of him, the pure genius that he was. It was natural, raw talent he had. I mean, he was a joy to watch. And I know Ludrup was as well, but Gaza was just, there was just something different about him. With his attitude and his swagger and he was... It was a, a joy. Um, it's funny that you mentioned the Aberdeen game, Ali, because I don't know why this came up. It was a few weeks ago, and I, I showed my boy. I was telling my my boys about Gaza, and I says, "Watch this!" And I, I found it on YouTube. So there's about a nine or ten minute clip yeah. of the Aberdeen game on YouTube, and they just watched it. And I said, "We were down one hill on title winning day, 
I mm. said, Gaza is blown out his arse. And David Robertson <laughs> said to him, give us one more, give us one more run, Gaza. I said, and he jumped to top him and he said, Gaza, I want to have your babies. I said, that's how much Gaza was adored, not just by the fans, but the players as well. I think the players were all starstruck by him at times. Uh, he was a superstar and, and yes, easy decision for me, Paul Gascoigne. Generally got goosebumps, mate, as cheesy as that sounds. Got literally hairs stood up at the back of my neck there when you were talking about showing your boys that clip and stuff. And uh-huh. that's what it was all about. Like, that's what Paul Gascoigne was all about. He was... He could change a game on on the on a switch, an absolute switch. If he decided he was going to score, there was nothing you could do about it. And he was he was spectacular, Paul Gascoigne, absolutely spectacular. Scotia, your thoughts on um, Gaza? No, sorry, yeah. Well, your thoughts on Gaza because we have to we have to talk about Gaza, uh, and then also give us your choice as well, mate. Yeah, Gaza was the one that I've, one of the other ones that I really didn't want to leave out my team, but I ended up doing so. Um, and I'd just be re- repeating what the guys are, are saying about him. He's just this lovable rogue, isn't he? Um, the, story <laughs> that, the story that McCoy's told about him with the, the fish and Jury's, Jury's car. car. <laughs> <laughs> even, like, so even off the field, it, was, it seemed like an absolute <laughs> brilliant person. Um, yeah, I, and I, I struggled with this. And then I'll quickly move on to my, my choice because I, I, I can't top guys, I don't think. So I'll just... Same man, midfielder, who's Claudio Arena. And again, Ryan spoke about Claudio Arena an awful lot as well. I mean, his goal against Parma in particular kind of stands out for me. Yeah, so I can't, I can't beat Gascoigne, so I'll, I'll give you Arena just instead. I feel a wee bit disappointed with <laughs> <in> myself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be too harsh yourself, Scotia. It's only a podcast, mate. Um, Ryan, I'll come to you, mate. Who's your, your second choice in the middle of the park? My second choice is, this is where I struck, I had two Germans and first one was close and then I, but how can I leave him out is George Alberts. Alberts goes and it, it, for me he's underrated with Rangers because not only for his goal threat, see the amount of assists, Alberts had so many assists and so much uh, the way we played, um, the, the ball went through him. Some of the goals, if I, if I think of the goal he scored against Celtic in the semi-final, I think it was the one that I was talking about, Amoruso come on, and he just went on an amazing run and cut to the left. He was in the right-hand side and cut to the left, kept running and done a couple of fake shots and put it in the top bag at the opposite side of the goal. He was just a fantastic player, scored against Bayern Munich, always performed in Europe for me. There used to be a couple of guys that sat behind me years ago and they would slag Alberts any time he made a slide tackle. They'd be like, oh, oh, oh what's he up to? And, <laughs> but Alberts, he just loved he loved, the sh- he loved playing for Rangers. Another one that bought into bought into playing with Rangers, and even though I'm not a massive fan of the, the badge kissing thing, the fans reacted to that, and he had a special relationship with the fans. And for me, yeah, it was George Alberts, the German for me, and what a player he was. He was genuinely the first guy that I loved almost as much as I loved Brian Loudrop. Um, he was the one that I absolutely grew to love. Alberts it was left footed, I'm left footed, mate. So when you're young, it's one of them kind of things. And the way he could strike a ball was like nothing I'd ever seen before in my life. It's just, he can literally destroy a football. Um, he was a tremendous talent, and I do think he was very underrated. Uh, people, as I say, people used to call him lazy, uh, but he just knew when to use his energy. And he's, I think he's still smoking about 30 a day. So um, <laughs> that was just Alberts all over. Um, I'll come to you, mate. Your second choice uh, in the middle of the park. I'll give you my left side as well because of what Ryan's just mentioned. Because okay. I had Alberts on the left of my midfield as well. So everything basically Ryan said about Alberts, outstanding players, loved a goal against them, hit three kicks. That goal Ryan said against them was oh, what a goal that was, by the way. But Brilliant, brilliant. I just wish he could have stayed longer, Albert. I think he would have. Again, another guy that bought in the Rangers, but centre of the park, it's got to be for me, Barry Ferguson, Mr. Rangers. I just think everything about Rangers, everything, he's just a Rangers fan, lived the dream, captain Rangers, won trophies with Rangers, went to a European Cup final with Rangers. Me and Scotia were lucky enough to meet him and again that night in 29, and he was fiddling about with Scotia's beard that night, asking him what Scotia used to his beard to get it that good. It I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said beard there, mate. I'm glad you said yeah. beard. <laughs> but I, I, 
I'll be honest, he was what even when I met um Barry Ferguson that night, he owns a room, Barry Ferguson. You know he's there, he's got that. You just get that bit about him. You're, you're kind of nervous speaking to him, to be honest, because he's he just that's the way he is. And I just thought he was fantastic footballer for us, a fantastic captain. And it was just it was similar the way it went in terms of when he was out with Scotland, and that's how his career kind of ended. And he always regrets that the way he left Rangers. And um, it's got to be Barry Ferguson for me. Yeah, again, he's uh, he's another one that I completely fell in love with, mate, and. Um, it's it's hard to kind of see past Barry Ferguson to a certain extent. I think the the way things happened with him, the way it ended, it's, it's always going to be brought up, and it's a shame because he shouldn't really be remembered for that. Um, the game that we all love to think about is when he single handedly beat um, Celtic on his own because um, he decided that we should not be beaten that day. And, um, truly a remarkable player, he really was, and he lived lived the absolute dream. Um, so uh, you've given your left side, so Scotia, your um, other mid, centre mid, please. I feel more comfortable with this one, and he's perhaps the polar opposite of um, Ferguson in many respects, but um, I've went for Stephen Davis. I think he's a very understated Kenny leader. He doesn't shout and yell, he just leads by example, play how I play. I mean, he's been at us now twice, a couple of loan spells, and, you know, we speak about him on this almost every week, saying 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10. He gives you no hassle. He's, he's how would I put this? He's like a captain, without being a screamy captain that Ferguson was. But you just you just have utter, utmost um, confidence in what Stephen Davis is trying to do and what he accomplishes. So, um, yeah, I have no fear putting Stephen Davis in. In my midfield. Yeah, again, mate, that's an absolutely unbelievable shout. Davis is now a legend of our football club. There is absolutely zero doubts about that. Um, the guy is truly phenomenal um, for the age that he is and the, the ability and the level that he's continuing to play at. And you're right, mate, he does all his talking on the football park by just being there and doing his job. And he is truly everybody. And all the interviews you see with Steve Davis, he seems like the most loveliest man you could possibly imagine. You'd love to sit down with a pint with him and just let him talk to you about football. And you would just be kind of in awe uh, talking to him. He just seems like one of the most lovely people. Uh, and yeah, he's a he's a he's an outstanding player and he's 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 been truly a massive part in our success um, to get ourselves back to where, where we belong. Um, so we'll move on to the left-hand side now. Ali, you've gave us yours, uh, so I'll come back to you, Ryan, for your, your left midfielder. Yep. As, as I said, the group chat, the left-hand side gave me a massive headache, so this is where I use my Dutchman, and it's uh, Van Bronckhorst. His, as similar to Tav, his engine up the left-hand side was... It was brilliant and Van Bronckhorst, as you should all agree, stood out very early in terms of what level he was at. I knew we wouldn't hold on to him for, I think we held on for longer than I thought. Mm-hmm. He was, he was English Premier League class, he was a fantastic footballer. Even when he played with the Dutch national team, I remember watching him and Newman uh, with Holland, would that be with that World Cup 98 that would be? And he, yep. was, he was brilliant with Holland, he was a great player, um, scored his goals plenty of assists and class above Van Bronck cost. It was, that was a neat, it was an easy decision to put him in the left-hand side, but just a pain in the ass it was Dutch and I couldn't use Newman as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he had a, quite a remarkable career um, after he's left Rangers. Um, he went to Arsenal first, then Barcelona, and I think he finished in Feyenoord. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, yeah Feyenoord. He's still managing just now. I think he is still managing just now. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't know where he would be managing, but yeah, I I remember watching them even playing for um, Barcelona as well. And you're know, just like, I guy used to play for us. Do you know what I mean? That guy used to play for us. Like unbelievable because he was he was a, a great talent. Um, and we probably did hold on to him a wee bit longer than we probably all expected. Um, so Ali, you said yours, um, Scotia. Um, I know we're coming to the left-hand side, but the way that this has kind of worked, I know you probably initially wanted to put this player on your right. I'll just let him float about and do what he does best. <laughs> um, and I, I'm, it's it's my man, Yanis Hadji, is getting put in the team. Youngest player in my team so far. Or, no, he will be the youngest player in my team. Um, yeah, and I, I, Yanis Hadji just oozes 
class, I think. I mean, I spoke about him a couple of weeks ago and how good he is. His goal for Romania against Germany the other night there was absolutely wonderful. It was. It's, it's, see his performance, obviously, when we had him in loan, he came on off the bench when we were playing Braga. He just lit Ibrox up and he mm-hmm. pulled us through and pulled us through for the win. Yeah, and I, I keep on saying, I expect big things from Yanis Hadji and I hope we've got him for another, at least another couple of seasons. I think the, the business of Rangers getting Hadji in was a no-brainer kind of thing. The, the name alone pays millions. Um, so it was, it was a cracking bit of business and I believe that Yanis Hadji is going to be a, a real top-class player. Um, I don't know how far he will go, whether he'll reach the heights of his... He, his dad, um, he's always going to have that kind of lingering over him, which could be a good and a bad thing at the same time. But yeah, I, I, he's, he's up and down just now, but he's still so young. And I think sometimes we forget just how young he, he actually is. He's got a lot of growing to do until he finds his, his stride and his true natural position. But to have him here working under Gerard and to see him flourish, mate, um, I, I'm not really shocked that you, you put Hadji into that team. Um, I expect big things from him um, as well. So we're on to the, the front line now, our front two. So what I'll do is I'll just come to you, Ali, um, just due to I can see the time going on a wee bit just now. So who's your front two? It's always McCoy and Haley for me, but I couldn't put them in because of all these reasons. <laughs> so I'll just put that out there straight away. Um, we've had some fantastic strikers, to be honest, over the years. You can go through them all. Kenija was another one I thought of, to be honest. He was brilliant. I wish we'd got him younger. How done do you go, him, Christ? Um, but no, my, my front two is our current number nine, Alfredo Morelos, who I absolutely love. I loved doing the celebration. You can when he scores. He done it against <laughs> him. So I looked up to him doing the celebration. Yeah. He's um he's broke records with Rangers. He's is he not at the all time European most gold in Europe now for Rangers? He beat Alan McCoyst. Yep. Um God be Alfie. I love Alfie. He's been with us longer than I thought. He's linked every bloody transfer window to go, and he's still here. Again, another guy that's bought in the Rangers, loves it here. He's Keeping all the, his message is keeping all the balloon shops afloat in Scotland as well. So <laughs> that's a positive for all them. But um, no, Morelos. And the other guy beside, again, it's, it's be through them all, but I'm going to go for Yelovich. I thought he was brilliant, Yelovich. Again, overhead kick he scored against Aberdeen, I remember. The goal he scored in the CIS Insurance Cup, whatever it's called, the League Cup, where it hit the post and somehow went back into the net. Brilliant player, player yellow bit. She'd, again, a player that probably should have stayed longer for us, but again, we were coming into tricky times in terms of money and everything, but Morelos and Jelovic is my front two. It's a, a frightening front two, as they would say, mate. What a, what a pair and that would be. Jelovic and Morelos up front would be tremendous. Um, I'll come to you, Ryan, your front two, mate. Exact same as Ali McCoy and Hately. It's, it's, it's what you <laughs> think of straight away, isn't it? Like... Yeah. This is when I, I when I came to the front two, I was like, why the fuck did I say to Scott about this this idea of one nationality <laughs> per player? This is such a bad idea. Um Alfie is my first one. He's brilliant. I've, we've, we've covered everything. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go, go on about that. Um one thing that I, I love Alfie for is when he scored that goal at Parkhead and he turned around to the cameras and just gave it to, you know, whether it's fifty five or ten or both. He's the only player that would have done that and shoved it right up them, even though there was nobody in the ground. He knew yeah. what he was doing that day, and I fucking loved it. And it won all <laughs> loving me for the rest of my days. Loved him. <laughs> Aye, so that as so well. I mean, he's, he's the only one that will do it. He he understands it. He understands what that was. So yeah, Alfie's my first striker. And see when Ali said Yelovich there, I was like, wow, how the fuck did I forget about him? <laughs> 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 like. I've had a shocker with this, by the way, I'm telling you. Because <laughs> um, wait to hear my striker, my, my other striker, my other striker, Marco Negri, right? <laughs> but like, hear, hear me out, hear me out, right? Oh. See that, see that uh, three weeks that he had for us? <laughs> <laughs> well, see that, being, all, being honest, see that f- four or five months he had, he finished every single chance he had was my dad had tickets for Liverpool Blackburn. And he said to me, do you want to go to this Liverpool game? It means we're going to miss the Rangers game on Saturday. And I said, nah, nah, Rangers game. He's like, it's only Dundee United. And I was like, nah, Rangers game. 
So we went to that 5-1 game and he scored the five goals. Negri was frightening for those four or five ones, absolutely frightening. And it sticks in your teeth. That was a 10 in a row season. That was a 10 in a row season. Well, who would have known what would have happened if it continued? But um, I Negri is the... Uh, the striker for me, but thanks for bringing Yelvich up, Ali. I'm tonight. <laughs> yeah, mate, I'm not going to lie, mate. So when I read your team, I went Negri. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> of all the players you could have picked, did you pick Negri? Anyway, time's, like, time's getting on, boys. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fair enough, mate. I was like, that's fair. But uh, look, we all thought we were going to witness something unbelievable with Marco Negri, mate. We really did. We did not foresee any of it happening. Um, I've never seen a guy look so miserable in my life scoring five goals against one team. Uh, he, he was a, a phenomenon. He really was. And obviously, he completely dropped off for him and it never, ever came back for him, really. But, I mean... If it had continued the way it was, I think he was on, he'd like, was it not something like 60 odd goals he would have scored was, by the end of the uh, season? He was 36, and correct me if I'm wrong, 36 goals before Christmas in all competitions, <laughs> I think it was. But just what I will say about Neg is he suddenly became this massive Rangers fan I've noticed yeah. on social media. All of a sudden, now these these dances and these sports is dinner are a thing to make money off of. He's all of a sudden come out of the woodwork. So, no, Jelovic is uh, my second striker. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough, mate. <laughs> see, on the Negri, see, on the Negri point, I think he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's not come out and stated that he just he treated football like a job back mm-hmm. in the day. He didn't yeah. enjoy playing it, but it's now he kind of understood what he had. Now, maybe he has taken the piss a wee bit, but I don't. I, I think he's maybe just, he thought it was I'm making money kind of thing, like the rest mm-hmm. of us do, rather than actually yeah. loving what he was doing. Yeah, but even at that, mate, if I'm playing football and it's still a job, if I score five goals against a team, I'm going to be pretty happy about it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'd be pretty delighted about that. Um, anyway, Scotia, I'll come to you, mate. You're, you're front two. Yeah, so I'll start um, off with um, two Ali picked as well, Nikita Jelovic. Um, <laughs> there, there, there was, there was another... <laughs> <laughs> no, to be honest, there was, there, was, there was another Croat in my mind, but I don't think we got him at his best, and that was Big Dado. Um mm-hmm. But I went for Jelovic because, yeah, when he came, I was raging actually when he first came. Not raging that he came, but it mind he was cup tied because he was playing with Rapid Vienna and they'd got through it like the European or the Europa Cup, U of the League, whatever it was. So he was cup tied for all the Champions League game in his first season. Um, but yeah, Ali's picked out a few of the overhead kick against Aberdeen. See, even his free kick against Kelly when we won the league, um, 5 1 down there. That was absolutely outstanding because you see everyone going, yeah, love it, yeah, love it. And then it just, and right in the pocket. So, yeah, Nikita Jelovic. And then, why don't we save the best to last? And then my other striker, as if you can't already guess it, is um, Alistair Murdoch McCoyst. And <laughs> we, Ali goes on about, everyone goes on about Ali, how good he was as a player. What, 100 and, no, 251 goals? I'm going to put it up to 252 goals because see that header he scored against the AC Milan Legends team when we played them? <laughs> that was absolutely outstanding. You know, <laughs> just on the pitch and bang, there you are. Yeah, I love Ali. Um, and I'll pass the, pass the mic over to everyone else to see how much they love him as well. Yeah, I mean, it's Ali, it's Ali McCoy to me. Uh, He'll never, he'll never be beaten. We'll never see the likes of him again. Um, I don't think he was. Uh, I just, uh, again, just a uh, a player that got it, a player that understood it, and a player that just knew where the net was. Like it's, it's kind of unrivaled what he, what he managed to do. Um, it's Alan McCoy to say Super Ali, and he, he always will be. We do speak about it. We've spoke about it a few times on the pod that the, the kind of managerial side of it's kind of maybe the only blemish against his name, but. The man, the man took the reins, knowing what was about to happen, and knowing what the club was about to go through. And yeah, it's not been handled well the way that he left. But I mean, I'm never going to criticise the guy for what he tried to do for our football club and for his football club. He's a big, a big a fan, as, as big a fan as us for sitting here. So um, he'll always be a legend to me, and he's 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 absolutely superb as a pundit as well. He really is tremendous. Uh, Ryan, just quickly, your thoughts on McCoy's? Yeah, as you said, I, I I don't like when people mention about the the managerial side because I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, slate him to see at that time. Alan McCoy stood up, 
stepped forward and took that job when nobody else did, when all these other Rangers men who are out and about now, by the way, they were nowhere to be seen. McCoy took that job and it was, he was not, I, don't, I didn't think he was ever going to be a great manager for us, but he took that job and I'll never, I'll never ever be forgotten for that, for his sacrifice for it. I know there's stories about financial things and stuff like that, but it's the stories as far as I know. He's a legend and the goal, it's my favourite celebration, it's worth mentioning, is the goal he scored. It's that game again, that's three times I've mentioned it, that cup game at Celtic Park, and he scored the header. And it's as if he scored his first ever old firm game, and it was his last ever old firm goal. He couldn't believe it, he, he could see, he just couldn't believe he scored again. And yes, absolute living legend, love him. Absolutely. Ali, I know he's your favourite player, mate, so you can have the final word on him. Yeah, my my hero growing up, Tan McCoy in the back of my top when I was when I was younger. But no, nah, he's Mr. Rangers for me, McCoy. And I always remember that speech he gave when I think it was it third division. I think we won, and he gave the speech. You get it on YouTube, and he gave it saying about how we all stuck together. And if it wasn't for the Rangers supporting everyone else, we possibly wouldn't be where we are at the moment. We might have we may have actually gone and. His, his final words were, we will get back to where we belong. And look at us now, we are back to where we belong and could be happier for him when we won that title last season. I thought about him instantly. I thought he'll be sitting there absolutely delighted McCoy. But as a player, to me, he's Mr. Rangers. He's always the striker for me. Him and Hately are the two you think of all the time. Modern day football's changed now. Many teams don't play with a two now. They play how we can play with a three up, one guy through the middle. So, no. Ali McCoy is a fantastic show for Scotia. I just wish I'd put him in my team, but it's, it's very difficult. So, yeah, we've got the end of that. Now, um, before I read out what the team is, right, this is not our favourite players and yada yada. It's a stipulation of what we've got in place. It's one nationality. There are some players that are going to get left out here that it's like you would never leave them out your greatest 11. But it's not, uh, it's quite easy for us to all pick a starting 11 um, of our favourite players of all time because it would be very similar because we're all very similar ages. So it would be not really much to kind of speak about, to be completely honest. So the way I've worked it is if the player had more than one vote, so if two of you have put them in your team, he automatically gets in the team. The ones where it's like one each, I've made the final decision on who I think I should go into the team and to make it that it's all just, um, everybody's got a different nationality. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've been stitched up in Egri here, by the way. I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a little disappointed about the goalie situation here. <laughs> yeah, the, the goalie yeah. situation is, the, um, it's a questionable one, to be honest. Um, so obviously two years voted for Niemi. So Niemi is the goalkeeper. There's the club at 22. Uh, 11 players of a different nationality. Rangers 11. Yeah, we'll call it that. Um, at right back, there was two votes for this player. Um, it's Claudio Rena, so he will slot in at right back. Uh, the centre-back pairing, uh, Queller again with two votes. He's in. And it's this centre-back pairing um, I've picked, and I've only picked it based on the, the way the rest of the votes went. And it's Richard Goff um, that I put in there uh, as the captain of the team as well, because it's Richard Goff at the end of the day. He's the, the leader, uh, and Queller and Goff um, as a back line is a pretty good thing, to be honest. Uh, your left-back will be Arthur Newman, um, again with two votes. Uh, right mid will be Loudrop. Everybody voted for him. Centre mid is Paul Gascoigne. Um, he got two votes. And the other one, I've went with Steve Davis um, because Goff is the Scottish player, if that makes sense. So I've went with Davis on that. And look, Davis is going to be remembered in very high regards when he finally decides to, to hang up his boots. Um, Alberts at left mid, again with two votes. And then the front two is Morelos and Jelovic, but both with two votes each. So, Niemi, Rena, Quella, Goff, Newman, Loudrop, Gascoigne, Davis, Alberts, Morelos, and Jelovic. Um, so, that's it. That, that, we've got 11 different, 11 different nationalities uh, in a team. So, yeah, that was that was something different, lads. That was really good. No idea why you picked Negri, mate, but I'll let you away with it, to be completely honest. <laughs> Look at Scotia um, too long, that's why. 
Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was great. Uh, let us know um, what your thoughts are, uh, what your what your teams would be. Uh, leave it in the comments, wherever you're listening or watching us. It'll be interesting to see um, if you agree with us or disagree with us. Um, a few might disagree with Ryan, just saying. Uh, but <laughs> thanks, lads. That was brilliant. Ali, thanks very much, mate. No problem. No, that, that was that was a good one. I, I, I did think we could do maybe a, a Scotland 11 as well in terms of who's played for Rangers. So maybe we'll do that in the next international break. But no, that was a good shout for Ryan, that one. And um, no, that was enjoyable. Yeah, it just to fill the, the Rangerless void, mate. We'll, we'll definitely come back with different shows like this. As I say, hopefully people enjoyed listening to it. Ryan, thanks very much, mate. Thanks, guys. I really enjoyed that. It was a good laugh. And um, what a team that is when you see it on paper. And uh, also, Marco, I know you're watching. I tried my best. <laughs> <laughs> Scotia, cheers, mate. Yeah, thanks. I hope the helicopter wasn't too annoying, but it's, it's finally left. So, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. That's good. I'm glad Helen's was not on fire, mate, with all the bombs that apparently going off. But no, I appreciate it. So, yeah, please leave feedback for us if you enjoyed it. We're more than happy to do shows like this. We generally love sitting down for an hour or so to talk about different Rangers players from days gone by, especially. Um, it's always good to sit down and have a talk about Rangers with my mates, so shameless plug from me, um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel like the videos, give us a wee 5 star rating on Apple Podcast, leave a comment share anywhere that you like, it really does help support us helps us get out there to as many people as possible, so we will be back towards the end of the week, and um, we'll bring you a, a club preview before we kick back into action on uh, Saturday against Hearts, so until we speak to you then we are Club Act 22, the Champions Podcast, I'll speak to you all next time, cheers <laughs>